I'm Rev. Nicole Riley. Welcome to the Clergy Wellness Podcast. This is Season 1, Episode 10, Self-Confidence for Ministry and Life. Today we'll also look at a wellness practice of the week, what's making this week good, and a mindfulness meditation. So let's jump in. would be fun to talk about self-confidence in ministry today. So let's start with a definition, and then we're going to explore how we can become more self-confident in ministry and life. So what is self-confidence? Well, self-confidence is being secure in who you are. You can trust yourself. You can feel all your feelings and know it's okay. In other words, self-confidence is your overall opinion that you hold of yourself. So, let's look at those things in greater depth. First, you trust yourself. This is key. Do you trust yourself? We see this when we make plans. Do you trust yourself to follow through on your plans and goals? Do you trust yourself to take care of yourself? And if you've made a decision, do you trust your choices? In other words, do you have your own back? Now, I know for a lot of us, we don't trust ourselves really well. We trust ourselves a bit and some areas maybe more and other areas less. But to grow our self-confidence, we will need to grow our trust in ourselves. Now, self-confidence stands in contrast to self-doubt. Self-doubt says, I sure hope this is the right decision, or I really hope this works out. Self-doubt also sets some unrealistic plans and goals and then gives up. Self-doubt says that what you need or what you want isn't important No one is born with self-confidence. Well, I guess maybe some people are, but not anybody I know. But as we grow in our trust in ourselves, keeping our word, our self-confidence grows. So the first part of the definition is of self-confidence is you can trust yourself. The second thing in my definition of self-confidence is knowing you can experience any emotion. That may sound a little different than what you were expecting, but we talked about emotions last week in last week's episode and how important they are and how often we are uncomfortable with feeling the full range of them. Self-confidence embraces that we can feel happy and sad, elated and dejected, that we have won and that we have lost. And regardless, we are still valuable. As we grow in our comfort with our full range of emotions, we will find that underneath our stress or sadness is a core that is centered and stable, able to handle anything. As we grow in our self-confidence, we grow our ability to know we can handle what happens in this life and that we have a center that always grounds us. So the second part of that definition of self-confidence is knowing you can experience any emotion. So if self-confidence is about growing our trust in ourselves, having a good sense of that we trust ourselves, that we have our back, and also being open to and able to deal with whatever life hands us emotion-wise and know that there is a core, a center that we can draw from, why do so many of us struggle with self-confidence? Why do we struggle to trust ourselves? Why is it that we don't have our own back? so that after making a decision, we doubt ourselves? Why do we give up on our goals, letting ourselves down and disappointing ourselves? I think all this happens for the very simple reason that it's part of the human condition. It is not evidence that you are broken. It is not about a moral failing. Here's the thing. There is very little in this life that comes alongside us and says, you can do this. You've got this. 
We believe in you. You matter. Instead, we think, oh, I messed this one up, or I'm once again the odd one out, or I don't know how, or what others think about me matters, or I'm damaged goods. But this is not what God wants for us. As people, we are created in the image and likeness of God, and God has so much more for us if we will but lean into it. So how could we increase our self-confidence? Well, before I jump into that, which I will in just a second, I do want to make clear and clean up any confusion that when we talk about self-confidence, we're not talking about arrogance. That is thinking better of ourselves than we think of others. Nor are we talking about being bossy or overly opinionated. That isn't what self-confidence is. Growing in self-confidence matters because it will enable us to set goals that we really want to achieve in this life. It will help us connect with people in a more rich and real way. And it will be a bridge toward helping us step out in belief and faith in times of challenge. So how are we going to grow our self-confidence for life and for ministry? Here's a couple things that I've been thinking about. First, be honest with yourself about where you are with your self-confidence right now. Don't see it as a, well, it is what it is thing in your life. Instead, see where you are and know that you deserve better. I say this because Jesus calls us to walk in the light. As his daughters and sons, we have a calling on our life. And to live into that, we need to grow our self-confidence. It matters. You matter. Number two. Notice when you sell yourself short, growing your awareness will help you grow. I'll give you an example from my own life. Right now, I am noticing that my self-confidence is low when I set personal goals. Right now, I'm working on some health goals, and in the last 30 days, I actually went backwards, not forwards. And so the voice in my head is all over that. And my self-confidence is really low in this area. As I work on this, I am pausing and feeling my feelings that surround all of this. I am noticing my history in this area instead of just pushing it away. I am feeling some shame and sadness about all of it. And as I explore it, it actually helps me to see that I'm stuck in a rut in this area and that it makes it harder to be successful because I have no real expectation that I can succeed. So I'm working on trusting myself and having my own back. So notice where you are doing this, where you're selling yourself short. Grow in your awareness of those areas of your life. Number three, make choices to believe in yourself and begin doing this important work. Now, the truth is that you and I will never move forward in growing our self-confidence if we don't make the choice to stop beating ourselves up for falling short, calling ourselves names, and putting ourselves down. Make the decision now to stop it and to believe in yourself, and to work on your own self-confidence. Now, of course, this is one of those decisions that, depending on how long you've been doing this and struggling with this, can be a decision you have to make several times a day. But I know that as we feel more confident, more self-confident, our thoughts will look like, I am capable. I have my own back. If I fail, it doesn't affect who I am. I can do this. I can be afraid and still move forward. I can get off the path 
and still work toward what I want. So why does all this matter so much? It matters a lot. It actually matters a lot for our lives and also for our ministry. Uh, Self-confidence will help us have less fear and anxiety. It gives us the ability to put self-doubt aside and to stop that rumination that can happen in our brain when we go over things again and again, doubting our decisions. Self-confidence also grows our motivation and resilience in this life. As we try new things, as we fail, as they don't go according to plan, self-confidence moves us out of feeling paralyzed when these things happen and instead helps us to put aside perfectionism so we look toward trying something new again. Self-confidence helps us grow our trust in ourselves. It helps us see our shortcomings, not with shame or disgust, but with compassion and love. It grows our appreciation of ourselves in all of our imperfections. Here's a couple quotes that I like about all of this. This one comes from the book Willpower. It says, high self-esteem seems to operate like a bank of positive emotions, which furnish a general sense of well-being and can be useful when you need an extra dose of confidence to cope with misfortune, to ward off depression, or to bounce back from failure. And this one comes from the book, Hard Wiring Happiness. It says, being for yourself, not against others, but on your own side, is the foundation of all practices of health, well-being, and effectiveness. I'll put the links for both of those books in today's show notes. I also want to share with you some things that Psychology Today, and I'll link that as well, gave as helpful insights as we grow our self-confidence. First, ask yourself, what did I find anxiety provoking at first, but is now relatively easy? In other words, what this one does for us is we can look at our lives and see all of our ups and downs and know that We have many successes, many times, even when we have failed, where we have learned and grown and thrived. So number one, what did I find anxiety provoking at first, but is now relatively easy? Bringing those to mind can help our self-esteem. Second, step back to gain perspective. This one means that you and I often are in the midst of giving ourselves a hard time because we lack perspective. I know last week I had an opportunity I really wanted and I did not get it. And then I began berating myself for it, but I took a couple steps back and then I stopped my self-talk and remembered that there is a perspective to be had here if I would just take a moment and look for it. And then third, ask yourself, who am I comparing myself to? This is a great one because a lot of times our self-confidence falters because we spend our time comparing ourselves to others. It is true. Comparison is the thief of joy. So stop it. And number four, recognize that when we feel anxiety or self-doubt, it doesn't necessarily mean we're on the wrong path. You know, I think this is a really helpful one because a lot of times we do feel like if we're feeling a little self-doubt that we're doing something wrong. Um, There are many times when making a decision or choice or doing something new will cause some doubt. Don't let that mean anything about you. Instead, know that's just how life is at times and that we can believe in ourselves and our decisions and choices no matter what. So, Join me in growing your self-confidence because self-confidence matters and it will grow your well-being. Wellness Practice of the Week. This is where I share something that you can do this week to increase your wellness. 
This week, I want to build on our focus on self-confidence by inviting you to think about what you have accomplished this year. What have you done this year that you're proud of? Preached some good sermons, grown a vegetable garden, reached out to some friends, dealt with a difficult staff member? If you can, write it down. But at the very least, I invite you to think, you can even pause this podcast, of at least five things that you've done that you feel good about this year. I invite you to savor your success. I say this because too often we rush past what we've done well to the next thing, thinking it doesn't matter or it's no big deal. But for the sake of your wellness, my friend, put that aside and think of what you've done this year that you can be grateful for and that you can celebrate. We're thinking on these things will build our self-confidence and grow our wellness. What is making this week good? This is the part of the episode when I talk about what I am enjoying with the hope that you will notice some of the good things in your week too. So this week, I spent Monday through Thursday at clergy camp. Really wasn't any official organized camp or anything like that. It was really just a group of eight of us who went up to the beautiful mountain community of Idlewild, California to do some planning and work, but also to share some meals, to play some games, and to take some naps. I don't usually do this kind of thing. First of all, the word camp kind of scares me in general, <laughs> but this was, this was a, a, certainly a glamping experience. It was a, a beautiful place that we were. I am aware that as I step out of the local church ministry that it's harder to keep in contact with my colleagues in the same way. And uh, this is one of the things that I was excited to do to build those relationships. Uh, This group of us that went um, is a group that's been meeting since COVID began online to discuss kind of what we were doing and what we were learning. And then we just continued to meet. It was a great time. And I am so grateful for these people and for the time we had together. So if you've never thought about going off together for a couple days with a couple clergy friends, you might want to think about it because clergy camp is what made this week good. Mindfulness Meditation. I invite you, wherever you're at, just to take a deep breath, to become aware of your surroundings, and look around, noticing what is around you. And if you feel any tension in your body, to just breathe into that for a moment, to just let it go as best you can. And I invite you to remember who you are. You are God's beloved. And remember in whose image you were created. You were created in the image and likeness of God. So as I read these words, just listen in, breathe them in, letting you, them give you some life and some hope today. Jesus said in Matthew 11, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. Come to me, all who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. May these words give you foundation, love, and hope this week. Thanks for listening. I appreciate you. I invite you to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. It helps so much in getting the word out. If you would share this with your social media channels or with your clergy group and let them know about this resource. I invite you to follow me on Instagram and on Facebook. I am at Nicole Riley Coaching, and throughout the week, I publish things that will help you remember to prioritize your wellness. Find out more about working with me as a clergy coach or a life coach or doing social media management for your church at NicoleRiley.com. And my book is Expanding the Expedition Through Digital Ministry, and you'll find that at Amazon. Today, I invite you to make the important choice to embrace a life of wellness. I'll see you next week.